it's Jennifer and Monica, and this is a spooky chat podcast bonus. So it's going to be shorter than a regular episode. Yes. Last week, we released the Lechuza episode. After we released that episode, we got a story from a friend of ours. He said, hey, you guys, I have a story for you. About Lechuza. About some sort of owl entity. Not exactly a Lechuza, but very, very close. Very, very scary. And we're going to play it for you now. I was telling you about the Lechuza and how Tim had a story about his grandpa and what was going on there. And then you told me a frightening story. Can you give me that story one more time? So it was 1999 and it was during the summer. Uh, I believe it was June. And so it was on a Sunday and one of my good friends at the time had reached out, texted me and, you know, reached out. I had a cell phone back then. So, that, so you know, it was, and so did he. So, yeah, we were bougie. Anyway, yeah, we were bougie. That so, was bougie. Yeah. He actually had texted me and back then they cost like 10 cents a, a text saying that, that he needed to go to El Paso to go see his family and that he wanted someone to go with him to help him drive because it was, you know, a long drive. And it was, I remember it was a Sunday and we were like hung over because we'd gone off the night before. And so I was like, you know what? I'll go with you. Not, you know, not a big deal. And we're going to go for the week. By the time we got everything together to leave, it was like 10 o'clock at night. Oh, Lord. So very That's last, too late. very last minute. Yeah. So it was really late to her, but you know, you're 20, 21 years old. So he showed up at my house and he had a Ford Ranger okay, with the, the cab truck. in the back, the truck. Yeah. And so we loaded everything in, in that back little section, you know, it had those little fold up seats back then. And loaded everything back there, and he was going to drive the first leg, you know, to head that way. So, you know, we left New Braunfels and uh, went down 46 to hit 10 you know, okay. that way, the back roads. Yeah. And then from there, we just started driving. So you're on I-10 at this point. I-10, and it's at night. Back then, you know, there's not, I haven't been out that way in years, and so I'm not sure what it's like to drive down 10 anymore. <laughs> but, you know, there's nothing out there. There's nothing going on, so it was just dark, darkness. Nothing but darkness and stars. So we drove for a few hours, and probably maybe three and a half hours. We we're out somewhere in the middle of nowhere, and he's tired, and I'm tired. And I'm like, he asked if I wanted to take over, and I said yes, you know, because I knew he was already done, and I was still, I was tired, but I was like, let's just try to, you know, see what I can do. I only drove for maybe 30 minutes before I had to, we had to stop. And by that time, it had only been a couple hours, so it was already like 2 a.m. So he's like, well, like, let's just pull over, you know what I mean, because he couldn't sleep. He needed to keep me up. And we just pulled over and we're like, well, we're going to just kind of try to get a few hours of sleep. Yeah. Whatever we can. And But we were both kind of like, it was hot, but we didn't want to leave the truck on. So he's we like, well, let's just crack the windows. But, you know, there's nothing out there. So we're both kind of like not trusting to just roll them down completely and yeah. just let air in. And it wasn't hot that night to where it was like well, we were just going to like suffer in the heat of the truck. So that's what we did. I think it was probably at a, maybe a, good, a few minutes had gone by before we finally were trying to fall asleep, try to get comfortable. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm still in the driver's seat. He wakes up and he's like, oh my God, oh my gosh, wake up, get up, start the car. We got to go, we got to go. And I'm like, figuring out like, why, what? I'm looking over to the right of him in the passenger seat. Why? You know, we're pulled over on the side of the road and he's just like, go, go, go now. And I'm just like, why? What's going on? What's going on? What? You know, I look over to my left. Finally, just because I'm looking around trying to see why he's freaking out. And there is a woman and she's like in a white, either probably a white dress, it looks like. And while there is kind of like a, like a veil, I guess. So it's, so I look over and you can see the woman and she's actually, I don't know what 10 is like now, but back then it was just, it was just a two lane each direction kind of thing on 10 once you get out in the middle of nowhere, you know what I mean? Out of, outside the city. And she's across the street and it's kind of like brush and stuff like uh -huh. that. It's not any like real trees or anything. So it's coming from that little field right there on the other side and she's just slowly coming over. It doesn't look like she's walking. She's not really just kind of moving in this direction toward us. And I'm just like, holy crap. And I'm freaking out. And he's just, my friend is just yelling, start the car, go, start the car, go. Typical scene out of a movie where you're like, you're thinking just start the car and go, but yet you're fumbling trying to because I didn't realize you, you know how much I was shaking to try to start the car, which was already, the keys were already in ignition. It's like, start it and go. So by the time I start it, I just, out of my peripheral vision, I see that the figure, the woman's figure is already at the door, just there standing. And he's just, the whole time he's never stopped yelling. And in my mind, I'm just like, I got to go, I got to go. I just see it getting closer and closer. And it's all in a matter of seconds, trying to just get it going. And... I can just see the, the woman's figure is there at the door as I'm starting the vehicle and putting the truck into drive. 
But it, when it's that close at, at the window, there, it's not a woman's face, but it's like a like an owl's type head. I can't, not a face of a woman, but like an owl head. It was really weird. I don't know what that was or what it is. And at that point, I didn't, I didn't, I never turned my head left to look at that figure. I just was like, put it in drive and punched it and left. And I never looked back. He was looking back and just said she was just, that shape was just standing there as we sped away. Was she see-through? She wasn't see-through, but like, what do they call a white kind of glowing? She kind of glowed. She stood out there in the, in the darkness. You know what I mean? Because she, she wasn't white, but it wasn't like she was super bright or anything, but she was just, what's the term? Luminescent, I guess. Kind of like, not see-through. I didn't see through her, but it was like kind of, it seemed, her shape seemed solid, but yet she was had a glowiness to her. But it wasn't until that dressed woman figure got close right on the window and just stopped there that I could see that it wasn't like a woman's head. But I, just, I presumed it was a woman just because it was wearing a dress with the veil over. And it wasn't until that close that I could see that the, just looking was not a face of a person. I had recently forgotten it until you started this chat. I never thought about it. And I know and I have never talked about it since. So... You know, we just never, we just were freak, freaked out about it. Obviously, we drove and we were just, we were pretty much awake the rest of the way, the remaining four hours we had left. Time-wise, it could have been between like 2.30 and 3 a.m. that that occurred. So right around those, that wonderful time frame that <laughs> things seem to just love to happen. Drove the rest of the way. We were, we were awake. Did you feel like, oh, this being's going to hurt us if she catches us? At the time, I don't remember thinking any like that death or anything like that or being hurt wasn't going through my mind the only thing that was going through my mind was getting away and not going look turning back kind of just were like those few minutes after we were speaking off just kind of like what was that i don't know what did you see what i you know this is what i saw he saw the same thing and what was it doing you know it obviously came toward us and stopped at the door you know it didn't try to enter or break it could have Anything could have happened where maybe whatever that, that ghost or person or figure was could have tried to come into the vehicle, could have came in the vehicle, the vehicle could have not started. We just only talked about it for a few minutes while we were awake, and then after that we just kind of changed the subject and just kind of never spoke of it again. So when we decided to leave and come back to the San Antonio-Austin area, that we definitely left during the day and we were not going to drive through the night. We did communicate that to each other, and that was pretty much it, and it just never... Never spoken of again to this day, to me actually talking about it. We, every now and then, we'll use a messenger to communicate, but it's never about what happened then. It's just always about what's going on now. That's probably the most, one of the top times I've experienced uh, something not natural or came off as supernatural that I was the most scared. One of the top three. That sounds frightening. It was, so... That sounds so scary. It's funny because for me, probably with you guys doing this spooky chat and then with uh, recent movies coming out, one of the things that makes me think of it now more regularly is the, uh, the Conjuring movies with the nun. The figure I saw wasn't, you know, in a black nun's outfit. It was some sort of white outfit with a, some sort of a hood and it maybe seemed like a veil or not a veil. It could have been a bride, could not have been a bride, you know, but it was white. I remember that. But maybe from the distance, it looked like a woman's face just out of my... That one time I looked over, it looked like a woman's face. But then after the shape was approaching, I never looked left again. So it was just off peripheral yeah. vision yeah. to see the shape just getting closer. <laughs> well, and, and usually in the Lechuza story, the woman is, she has the face of a woman and the body of an owl. But this was kind of flip-flop. Yeah, it's kind of flip-flop. So I don't know what that was or, I don't know. And you don't remember what section of I-10 you were on, right? I don't know what section of I-10 we were on. Um, like I said, we'd probably driven for about, we left at 10, I knew that, so it was, so it was probably around two that we decided to stop. So I know it was about four hours in, like halfway there that we decided to stop. Okay. So, and just as soon as we fell asleep, maybe about 2.30ish, between 2.30 and 3 is when we woke up. And, and I don't know, I don't know what woke up to even see that or just yeah. to make him think, maybe he was just, Looking around because he couldn't really truly sleep in the truck. So, yeah. Oh, no. Crazy. Well, thank you so much for your story. You're welcome. And I'm going to send this back to the guys and we'll see what they think. All right. Sounds good. What do you think of the story? Terrifying. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like the idea of being in a car and seeing, seeing something approaching your car 
I don't like that. I don't know anyone who would, but it's very... Well, and when he was telling me, he was like, I saw it, but out of the corner of my eye because it was in his peripheral vision. Yeah. And he was trying not to look at it. So, you know, when you see something, you're trying not to look at it, but yeah. you, you're obviously looking at it. It's yep. creepy AF. He was like, I can't believe I didn't remember that story. So Jeff told us three stories. He said, I have top three times that I was scared. That was one of them. We hope to air the other two stories sometime soon, but we wanted to clip them into an episode where it made sense. If you've been on that section of I-10, it's so weird. I have not. Yeah. It's so well, strange. We flew to California, so and I've never been to El Paso. I flew, we flew to El Paso and then to Vegas, yeah. but I've never been on that stretch of highway we do have a couple of friends that have been to like Marfa, Big Bend, Marathon, Alpine, all those places. I've been to Marathon. We we should go to Marfa. Yeah, we, we add should. Add that to our field trips list. Yeah. Cool. But I, I haven't been able to find anything of what that was. I don't know. What, I still don't to this day. I don't know what it is. I bet it was a lechuza because they're men. Yeah, but it's usually an owl body and a. But- I don't know what would be flipped. Let's be honest, though. There's really not any hard and fast rule for these kind of things. Except that like, one. Well, no. I mean, <laughs> you, I mean they're going to say, oh, it was, I mean, what if this one's like, oh, I'm a body of a woman with a face of an owl. Or maybe that's something totally different that nobody knows what it is. I feel like it's some sort of spirit that hunts down men that are out in the middle of the night, which sounds like a lechuza, but I don't think it's a lechuza. I, I don't know. If you guys have seen anything like that, contact us. I guess we'll see you next week at a full episode. Get ready. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Instagram. Spooky underscore chat underscore podcast on Instagram. And then spooky chat podcast at gmail.com. If you have any stories or any follow up. And oh, thank you to Forrest Wilson for our awesome music. Gallows. Still love our theme song. <laughs> so beautiful. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Stay safe, spooky babies. <laughs> Sorry, Charlie is thirsty and hungry. He wants a snack. Charlie's a dog. Charlie's He's not a dog. A person. <laughs> He's a little Boston Terrier.